Today, we will review two very short German novellas. First, a Zauberbuch or the Magic Book by Franz Petscher from 1912. I have no idea who Petscher was. I found articles relating to beekeeping from Austria from the late 1890s referring to a man of the same name, but have no idea if they are the same. I am pretty sure he was the author of an article in a 1907 issue of Zentralblatt für Occultismus. The narrator arrives for a summer holiday in the Alps in the village of O, and hears of a strange recluse living four hours journey into the wilderness completely alone, and blamed for everything from hiding immense riches to causing it to hail. So the narrator makes the journey there and asks the old man, who seems to have immense knowledge about hypnotism and other occult sciences, about magic. The old man tells him how he sought out a master magician, who told him he could only do magic if he does not want to, and can only do so for others. Then he sticks an image of a house into his hand, and has him stared at it for several days while trying not to think about his master. Then he realizes he just has to concern himself with himself. In the present, he shows the narrator his magic book, The White Heavens, i.e. Nature, and then we realize the entire book has been a means to advertise the publishing company's edition of the collected works of opera singer, esoteric and Freemason, Johann Baptist Krebs, i.e. Jebe Kerning, conveniently available for purchase at this time. The story is really nothing. Nothing happens except one person staring at a picture for a few days. We now move on to Manor by Karl Heinrich Ulrichs. Karl Heinrich Ulrichs was a German lawyer, a pioneer of sexology, and the modern gay rights movement. He was born in 1825 in Westerfeld, Ostfriesland, the son of architect Hermann Heinrich Ulrichs and Anna Elisa Heinrichs. He studied law and theology at the University of Göttingen, graduating in 1846, and then attended the Berlin University from 1846 to 1848. He was initially a lawyer, before becoming an assistant judge in Hildesheim in 1853, but resigned in 1854 rather than face blackmail or dismissal should his homosexuality become known to the public. He advocated legal reform and gay marriage, moving around Germany in the 1860s and being legally persecuted. His books were banned in Saxony in 1865, then later in Berlin and all of Prussia. In 1866 he was briefly imprisoned for protesting Prussian rule after its annexation of his native Hanover. After writing 12 pamphlets in defense of what he called Uranian love, he went into self-imposed exile in Italy in 1879. He died in 1895 in L'Aquila, Italy. Manor takes place in the Faroe Islands. We have Har, a 15-year-old boy, being taken by boat by his father between the islands of Stroma and Wega when a passing wave capsizes their boat. The boy's father drowns, but Har is saved by a sailor named Manor. The two then become close. Very close. As you may have guessed based on Ulrich's biography, the two form a gay relationship, which does not bother me, but what does is Manor is 19 at the time. Har is taken home to his mother Lera, but the two often meet both at night and in secret, and talk of going away on a ship. Then a Danish whaling ship comes and Manor goes and Har is left behind, beg not to go by his mother. Two months later Har sees the ship come back, sink, and watches everyone drown, including Manor. They bury him, but Manor keeps sneaking out of his grave to suck the blood from Har. The boy becomes weaker and weaker, so a wise woman has them dig up his corpse and nail it inside his coffin. And after one failed attempt, they succeed, but Har keeps fading anyway. Then he sees Manor coming to take him away and dies. The story is better than the first, but the age difference here makes me rather uncomfortable in hindsight.